Hey! Hi! How you doing? This is the Gamertron, and welcome back to the Gamertron Show, and I am joined by a very special guest, Ray, of Shotana, Fi uh, Shotana Films or Studios? Studios. It's Studios now. Studios. Shotana Studios. Yeah. Yeah. He, ha he runs an amazing YouTube channel. Um, Ray and I actually have a bit of history, but this is the first time we're actually having a direct conversation and making a video collaboration together. And I am completely honored to have Ray on the show to shoot the shit, talk about all the amazing games that came out this year. And uh, Ray, why don't you tell us a bit about yourself and your YouTube channel before we get into the meat of the conversation. All right, then. Uh, just to be brief, uh, my name is Ray. Um, I'm the showrunner at Shotana Studios, and my channel pretty much has to do with video game culture and film culture, pretty much the whole popular culture. Also, I like to make short films and, you know, uh, some cartoons now because I've been getting some help from some friends. So I'm very diverse, I guess, in that sense. Yes, so please subscribe to Ray and his YouTube channel, Shotana Studios. There will be a link in the description and in the comments section. Please go to his channel, check out his videos. He, he does amazing fan theories. He has some fantastic fan theories about a variety of games and movies, and they're just, they're so fun to listen to because you have so much energy in, in, into this, Ray. You, fantastic job on your YouTube channel. Please check out Ray's YouTube channel. Anyways, uh, enough with the self-advertisement. <laughs> uh, meet of the conversation. Ray, you are a PlayStation gamer, yes? Yes. I mainly try to play as many games as I possibly can, like different consoles. I do have a PC. Uh, Xbox One, my friends have it, but yes, the console I own, the one that I play the most, is PlayStation. Yes, and you've been able to play a variety of different games this year. Some we've been able, we've both played, but some I just haven't been able to touch. And I watched your top 10 games of 2015 video, which was great, by the way, and you should all go watch that. Link in the description and the comment section. Okay, enough with the advertisement. Okay. <laughs> but... But yeah, you played a lot of uh, great games this year, as did I. I have yet to make my top 10 games of the year video. God, so much work for that video. Anyways, <laughs> uh, so uh, some of the games I want to talk to you about. First of all, games I couldn't play, like some of the PlayStation exclusives you were able to play this year. What are some PlayStation exclusive games this year that really stood out to you? Well, in the list, um, there's only like three that I would actually say that are PlayStation exclusive. That one would be, or the, those would be really... Ollie Ollie 2, Rocket League, and mainly, this one is 100% PlayStation exclusive, you're not going to find it in any other system, is Bloodborne. Oh, yes. Okay. Let's talk about Bloodborne for a moment. I'm a Dark Souls fan. I've played Dark Souls 1 and 2. Cool. Um, have you played the other Dark Souls game before Bloodborne? Yes. I, I played 1 and also played 2. I uh, used to live in a house up in Santa Cruz with uh, just a bunch of housemates who would just play nonstop. They would just play the game. They'd wake up, eat, play, go to class, come back, play for the rest of the day, and they just go to sleep. It was nuts. Uh, that is the curse of Dark Souls. <laughs> yes. It is addicting. Now, I only got to play a bit of Dark... Uh, not Dark... I immediately called it Dark Souls. Bloodborne yeah. at a friend's house. And I have to say, I was very impressed with the controls. I yeah. find Bloodborne... Even though I'm not, I, I'm terrible at PlayStation Xbox controllers. Even though I'm terrible at the con uh, controllers, I felt like Bloodborne like had really good controls. The, as someone who is a uh, PlayStation uh, expert, I would say, uh, how does how does Bloodborne compare in terms of controls, gameplay compared to the other Dark Souls? Because Bloodborne is getting tons of accolades this year for one of the best games of the year. I, I, I assume you agree with that assessment. Oh, I'm uh, controller-wise, it's amazing. It's so fluid. Like since I've been, I've been used to the PlayStation controller, the uh, PS1 games. So on the controller, it feels great. But I can, I agree with those accolades. I give it nothing but praise. It is a fantastic game. The controls are spot on, fluid, fast-paced action, which is something completely opposite of what you get from Dark Souls. I know, with Dark Souls, it's like, always remember, take a shield, take something that you can use to protect yourself as... It, it, it was a, a real dance of defense and offense, but from what I always see from Bloodborne, like, you're always on the offensive. It, it makes it really different from the other Souls games. No, yeah, it's com it's like a complete change of pace. Like, at first, you're like, oh, so is it, am I going to play this like, uh, like Dark Souls at all? Is it going to be just like that? Like, they, no, completely different. You 
dodging around, you die, all of a sudden you want to get in there, you want to take back your health, which is like one of the main mechanics I love about it. So like, uh, if you take, get, you know, get damage and everything, there's a spot, like a good patch of your health that's like left over, that's like uh, kind of lit up. If you attack during a certain time, you gain that health back. So it's always like, it gives you incentive to just keep going in there and just keep attacking. Oh man, yeah, wow. That, it, it, re it really does show you how like the game does realize, okay, we gotta do something new with Dark Souls. Let's change up the formula a bit. And it was, I have to admit, it was an absolute genius move to make Bloodborne a PlayStation exclusive. Because it's now one of the best PlayStation games out there. Yeah. Uh, although I would love to see this game branch out because everyone needs to experience this game. Because, oh my god, this game is great. Not only that, like the art style, everything is just superb. Mm, that that gothic, that gothic uh, Cthulhu-esque feel. Not, not, not Cthulhu-esque, yeah. Lovecraftian. I know someone in the comment section, it's Lovecraftian, not Cthulhu-y. <laughs> Same thing. Oh, I'm going to get damage for that now too, damn it. <laughs> it's unavoidable. Another game you got to play that I didn't get to play this year, Rocket League. I hear nothing but good things about Rocket League. It's it's soccer with cars. So tell me, in your opinion, what is it that makes Rocket League such a special multiplayer game this year? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, it's just, I don't know, you get like this vibe like you're a child again, I guess. It's just... The game sounds like a child made it up. Like, I'm gonna get these cars and I'm gonna play soccer with them. Like, okay. But once you actually start playing, it's like, it's the most exil- It's, you just get nothing but a competitive, like, streak through your veins. You're just like, oh my God, I wanna win. It, it, and not, and if you don't win, it's just a ton of, I don't know. It's really hard to explain. Like, I really recommend people to play it because it's, it's not like FIFA. It's not like Twisted Metal. It's completely different. It's just nuts. It's just like, utter chaos, utter carnage, and it's just people just trying to get that damn ball in the goal. <laughs> and sometimes when, when you like block like block a ball, you're like, yeah, hell yeah! And when you miss a goal, you're like, you're like, oh my god, I cannot believe I missed that. But right after that, you're just like, I want to get back in the game. Like, you just got to keep going. Oh, man. So what is it specifically about the gameplay? Like, what is it, like, what can you actually do in the gameplay that allows you to, like, have this exhilarating feel? Well, like, because I, I, I've seen the gameplay, the gameplay in action, but I'm not entirely sure how everything exactly works. Well, first off, um, you have complete control. The like the controls are perfect. Like every move you make, it's all on you. Also, um, you get rocket boosters, so like you're able to just like you know use them as like you know acceleration. But can the, you use them at any time? Is there a recharge uh, mechanic? Yeah, there's recharge, uh, but there's like um, orbs around like later on the map that you can collect to like get a more charge back. Oh, but, so like in a racing game? Yes, very much like like Mario Kart, very, very much oh. like. Yes. But then, um, what really changes the game up is um, you have the ability to jump, and when you jump once. Wait, 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 wait! Your cart, the car can jump. Yes, you have a. <laughs> okay. You have jump, and you can use it twice, so you can make a double jump. Okay, cars that can double jump. Okay, uh, well, this game's already defying reality, so I guess why not tape it, take it a step further? <laughs> oh, yeah, it's nuts. It's it's not in the realm of reality at all, and that's why I feel like it's just a blast to play. It's like, there's none of that, like, oh, well, what are the physics? Like, screw physics. Just enjoy yourself. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah, I hear nothing but good things about Rocket League. I definitely have to pick it up and play it sometime, but so many games came out this year. So many games that I'm sure I missed. What are some, like, maybe not some of your favorite games of the year, but some decent games you played this year that not everybody may have heard of, like some indie titles or something like that on PlayStation? Um, I don't know if it was an indie title. Uh, it's not really a PlayStation, but Resident Evil Revelations 2. Oh, I never I never got to play the Resident Evil Re uh, Revelation games. I have a friend who actually live-streamed it. I have an idea of what the gameplay's like. It, it definitely reminds me of... I only, I've only played Resident Evil 6. I know, heresy! Um... But uh, playing Resident Evil Re Revelations 2, how is that in contrast to other Resident Evil games? Because I know there's a big split between Resident Evil fans and what they want and what they don't want. No, yeah. Um, ever since Resident Evil 4, when they changed up the formula, everyone's been like, they split. So people who prefer like the old style cameras and people who like, enjoy like the third person like shooting mechanic. Well, Resident Evil Revelations 2 is more like Resident Evil 4, but less like Resident Evil 6. Some people will understand what I mean by that. But, um,. The game is pretty much your run-of-the-mill, like, third-person shooter. Uh, same kind of mechanics as Resident Evil 4. Feels a lot... It's, it's a fun game. 
the story is a little lacking, although tons better than Resident Evil 6. But the reason why I like this game a lot is um, there is this mode called Raid Mode. It's like a... Raid Mode? Yeah. I've never heard of Raid Mode. What's Raid Mode? Uh, have you ever heard like Mercenaries Mode? I, yeah, I know of Mercenaries. It's similar to that, but it's more like a challenge arcade style. It's pretty much the exact same thing, just a lot more things put into the game. And each level um, like is like a trial run. Like You have to survive. So like the oh. more, more more levels you do, the more you more upgrades you get, and like it just becomes like an arcade game. Like oh, you're done with this level, move on, keep going, keep going, level up, keep going. It's a really weird side game, but I had the most fun with it, and I spent so many hours playing that. Hmm, Inter uh, I, I've never ever played another Resident Evil game besides Six, so maybe I'll give uh, Revelations a try because I am hearing good things about it. And now I'm hearing your uh, recommendation about it. This ra this raid mode actually sounds genuinely very fun. All right, so now let's move on to something I'm sure everybody wants us to talk about: games we have both played and uh, contenders for game of the year. So l let's not waste any time and head to what is obviously one of your favorite games of the year and one of my favorite games of the year: Fallout 4. <laughs> oh my God, I love that game. Oh man, w where do we even start? Okay, I'm guess um. How does Fallout 3 to Fallout 4 contrast you? Like, do you think it's an improvement, a downgrade? Like, F Fallout 3 to Fallout 4, because while they're very similar, they're also very different in many ways. So, Fallout, uh, Fallout 3 to Fallout 4, what do you, how would you compare the two? Comparing the two, um, I feel like, uh, it's, uh, it's really difficult, but um, I feel like Fallout 4 is a little more streamlined, and while some may see that as a bad thing, it, it works in its favor. Also, because it adds in a bunch of customizable like uh, attributes, you're able to customize your weapons. You're, you're able to build your house now. You're able to build your like your armor. There's a lot of people. oh yeah, building power armor, man. I've spent so many hours just yeah. tinkering with power armor. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. And, uh, yeah, speaking of power armor, do you what do you think of the change to power armor? Because before it was just an armor, j just a suit, like you would. Uh, where in any other Bethesda game. Now they've made something almost completely different. Now, I understand how some people didn't enjoy this that much. It's like, oh, what the hell? It, you're taking it away. But, like, for me, I guess it made it so much better. First off, power armor in this game is beast. It is so mm -hmm. much better. Like, oh, my God. When you put it on, you actually feel like you're invincible. And making it... It, it gives you that Iron Man feel, basically. It's the Iron Man game we never got. Yes, Exactly. But and but I do also like the fact that they gave it like a finite like a uh, use to it like oh you have to have fusion cores. At first I was like damn it I don't want to go around collecting fusion cores. But see now that I'm done with the game I have so many fusion cores that I'm like damn it I should <laughs> use more. But I'm exactly. Still, I'm still I had the exact same feeling like oh no a brand new resource I gotta hunt down. Wait oh I have twenty of them. When, yeah. when did that happen? <laughs> kind of weird way to put it, but like. Uh, the, the power armor, I kind of see it now, like, I don't know if you're going to get this, but uh, have you ever played Metal Slug? I've heard of it. I've definitely heard of Metal Slug, and I've seen some gameplay, to, uh, 2D side-scrolling shooter, yes? Well, in that game, it's like when you're running around, you're obviously, you know, just you shooting. If you get shot, you die. But you're also able to jump into these kind of mechs and machines and also, like, these tanks. And I kind of got that vibe from the power armor. Like, once you get in this thing, you're like, I don't want to lose this thing. This is mine. I, I need to use this thing to its full potential. I need to kill as many things as possible. I need to get out of here. I need to... It's just... It, it gave it more importance. Like, before, power armor was, like, something I just put on, and there we go. It's just a piece of armor. But now it's like, I need to find these things. I need to use them when I need them. And it's, oh, it's just important. Yes. I, I, honestly, yeah, I agree with you 100%. Like... It, 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 I hope this stays. I hope this is a mainstay. Like, power armor now only acts the way it does in Fallout 4. But, I, like, the, I don't think they can, like, ever go back. <laughs> they shouldn't, because, I mean, they called it power armor for a reason, and now it's actually powerful. So, I mean, don't... I, I, just make some other kind of armor that people would like like that, but just keep the way it is, because I personally love it this way. Oh, yeah. Okay, before we move on to other games, another thing about Fallout 4 I wanted to talk to you about. Um, how does the new open world compare? Because I've been hearing some strange arguments, people saying, oh, this open world is smaller than Fallout 3 and, and New Vegas and stuff like that. It looks like just, it looks just as big to me. Like, how do you think the open worlds compare to the previous Fallouts? 
Now, I agree with what people are saying. Map size, like actual square miles, like just by looking at the map, nothing else, they are right. This game is smaller. Just by that, though. When I, mm -hmm. this, this map is far more denser, though. What that means is like pretty much when you walk into a building, that building doesn't end just that first floor. You can either go upstairs, you can go downstairs, and when you go downstairs, you can sometimes get led into like this huge, vast like sewer system or like this huge, like vast like a uh, construction site that just goes down lower. And look, I, I walked into a building thinking, oh, I'm just gonna pick up some supplies, and I was there for three hours. <laughs> just, just one building. I thought like, oh, I'm gonna go in there get some ammo, maybe kill some super mutants, whatever. I was in there for three hours. I was fighting, like these huge ass creatures i was fighting a bunch of ghouls another time i literally walked into a construction site i had no idea what was down there i there was a mission i completed it on the first floor and i'm like oh, i'm gonna keep going down kept just fighting just tons and tons of feral ghouls and by the end i managed to get this um this knife this cer ceremonial like crazy jagged knife called uh craven's tooth and oh. it's insane like when i found it i was like what the hell is this thing there's no story to it like, there's no, like, mission to it. It's just there. And when you're walking through, like, the catacombs of, like, this uh, construction site, which is now, you can tell that it's no longer a construction site, it's like the like the the bowels of, like, this horrible, crazy cult. You, the game actually, like, um, triggers, like, flashbacks. So you're seeing this cult, like, in, like, flashback. It's really weird. Oh, man. Wow. What? Again, that's, that, that's why one of the great reasons why I love Fallout 4. You're like, you're discovering stories while making your own. Yeah. That, that's what I, lo I love about that. It's your story as much as the world's story. It's insane. Like, I honestly love the fact, because I just want to keep going to search more and more. Like, I get some of the side quests people don't like, but there's things out there that don't even involve side quests. Like, there was uh, these three banks, and I pretty much traveled to all of them, and I just robbed them clean. <laughs> Oh, I haven't. I didn't. I haven't found any banks yet. Uh, oh, I hope the good good loot in those banks. Oh, there's tons of great loot in there. Um, there's like oh. gold. There's just tons of pre-war money. Like I was, I was swimming in money that day. Oh, I I need to find these banks now. Are, are they held by raiders or something like that? I, I know we shouldn't be talking about details about Fall, the, yeah. these kind of details about Fallout Four, but now you got me curious. <laughs> Some do, but other ones are just pretty much locked up, and you have to have like great. Um, Pretty much lock master lockpicking skills. Lock skills, or like master, like, yeah, uh, computer hacking skills. <sighs> Fallout 4, here I come to grind again. Yeah. Oh boy. Another open world RPG we should talk about before I get, or I'll get crucified for not talking about it. The Witcher 3. Mm hmm. So, it's, I think The Witcher 3, now I know I'm gonna get crucified for this. I think it's a bit overrated. I think it's a bit overpraised, but I cannot deny it is a stupendous, stupendously well-made game. Again, I will have to side with you on this. It's look, I love the game. I understand how people love it, but it's just the praise that it's getting. It's kind of a little confusing because I've had many people. I'm talking about many people tell me this game set the bar or like raised the bar for RPGs. But when I played the game, I loved it. I loved everything, but I always ask them, like, can you explain to me just 100% what did this game raise the bar? I know exactly. Like, again, we're not bashing The Witcher free here. Like, don't get us wrong. It's a great game, Ray. It's a great game, right? I loved it. I, I'm, I'm in love with that game. I love the hell out of the game. The game is amazing. I can't wait to play it again. Like, I'm going to go through a second playthrough. And I'm going to make completely different choices. Like, the game is amazing. But exactly. I mean exactly. But it, it doesn't really revolutionize anything. It just does really good things that good RPGs have done before. Exactly. Yeah, I don't... Like, it. The Witcher Free does do some unique things, I will say. Like, the whole contract monster hunting aspect. That was a bit different. I will admit, I haven't played anything like that where you're hunting down the monster, you're playing detective, you're setting up a trap. I really enjoyed that. That was very unique. I love the monster contracts. Th those are a unique bit of gameplay. Like, like, you gotta hunt it down, you gotta set up a trap, you gotta do this and that, discover its weaknesses. I really like the monster hunting. That was genuinely different. No, yeah, and that's one of the main things I love about that game, too. Yeah, and and also, so far, I haven't beat the game yet. I'm trying to... God, it's so fucking huge. Yeah. I'm trying to beat the game, but it just... It keeps going, just like, think, oh, have I finally found Siri? Oh, no, your princess is in another castle. And you're like, God damn it, why? No! <laughs> but yeah, um... 
Have you played the other Witcher games? Uh, I played a bit of one and a bit of two, and I didn't enjoy myself too much. Um, are you like a newcomer to the Witcher or a hardcore Witcher fan sort of thing? Newcomer. So I'm oh. I'm on the same boat as you are. Okay, okay, but like as a newcomer, like I had some pre. I, I knew already knew some stuff about The Witcher, like I played a bit of one and a bit of two. As a complete newcomer who's never played a witch, uh, any of the other Witcher games, like, how is it to a, a complete newcomer? This is a weird way of putting it. I know it is. I put it like this to my friend the other day and he understood me, but it, to me it's like a much bigger, much more fleshed out, and much more adult and darker Zelda game. Huh. You know what? That I always looked at as a, as a kind of like uh, like that, but a darker Skyrim game sort of thing. But you make a good point about the Zelda reference. That there's dungeons. You're helping out townsfolk. There's dynamic secondary story quests. Yeah, you yeah, Th that's actually a really good comparison. Like I that, that's what I got from it, and that's what made me fall in love with it. Like it's and I'm not saying oh just because I love Zelda, I love The Witcher Three. I love The Witcher Three for its own merits. Like how you pointed out, like the monster hunting. That's not in Zelda. But it's just like no. all these elements come together, and like it's just something I re like. It reminded me of it. But other than that, it's its own fantastic game. Exactly, exactly. I, I, it, it uh, uh, spoiler alert. It's going to be in my top ten games of the year. It's kind of impossible for it not to. It's such a damn good game. Oh, damn. Speaking of damn good games, I was supposed to talk about this game in games I haven't played, but I've heard so much and seen so much about it. I might as well have played it. Uh, I know I know another game that was a big deal for you this year that uh, I'd, I'd love to just hear your praise about and maybe some your concerns about Metal Gear Solid 5 the Phantom Pain I knew this was coming all right oh yeah so again I have not played it but I've seen so much of it for the longest time like months people were non-stop about Metal Gear Solid so I know quite a bit of it and I I will admit I spoiled the story for myself okay so f feel free to Give it, give it, give it your all. Like, I guess I might as well ask, you've played the other Metal Gear Solid games. How is this as the possible finale to the Metal Gear Solid? Because Metal Gear Solid's over. Without Kojima, it's basically over. Let's admit that here. Right. Uh, so sorry, I keep talking over you. I apologize. I'm being incredibly no. rude. Please no. go on, Ray. You have not talked to me once. Don't worry about it. Um. All right, anyways, Metal Gear. Metal Gear Solid Five. Um. How it compares, I mean, the way I put it in one of my reviews, um, it's just, essentially what they did is they took all the great elements of all the Metal Gear, like the best elements of every single Metal Gear, and they put them all into like one huge open world. And you get so much freedom. Like when you're making, like back in the old days when you do a mission, it's like do this, do this, collect this, and go. And then once you get there, you use it on this or something like that. This game essentially is like, oh, go, uh, go get that hostage. How do I do that? However the hell you want. You want to, like, rain fire on the whole freaking village to get that one person? Go ahead. You want to sneak in, like, you know, it's like, get get it out of guards like, where, where, like, the hostage is being, like, um, held? Then do that. Or go in guns blazing? Do that. I just love the freedom in this game. The how, game did, how did you play Metal Gear Solid? Because I know it's a, like you said, it gives you a lot of freedom, and, like, I, there's different play styles. Like, I find that very interesting in a Metal Gear game. Like, there's different play styles, not just stealth. So how would you play the game? I played it every single possible way I could. Like, I didn't try to limp myself, like, oh, I'm just going to go in there and shoot him. Like, at first, I was like, you know what, let me see if I can just try and sneaking in just completely 100% every time. After a while, I was like, this is kind of, you know, like, not what I want to do. But I do have this amazing gun I just found. Let me see if this works. I killed everyone. Like, okay, that was way too easy. But that was so much fun. So I do it a couple more times. And after that, like, oh, wait a minute, I just unlocked this. It's just, the more you play the game, the more you get unlockables, and every single unlockable is just so enticing. You're like, oh, I want to use this now. Oh, I want to use this now. Oh, I want to use this now. It's insane. And by the end of it, you'll probably have, like, a certain play style, but personally, I just try to keep it fresh every time. I'll just, like, look through my inventory, like, huh, how do I want to take down this mission now? Uh, no, I'll, I'll take this. Or, you know, I'll take the horse instead of the dog. Or, I'll, I'll take uh, Quiet instead of uh, my uh, Metal Gear. It, it's It's nuts. Wow! It, it, again, it sounds like a game that gives you a lot of op it gives you a lot of options. Basically, it gives you all these. It basically it throws you in a sandbox, gives you a bunch of toys, and tells you go wild. Basically, is the gist I'm getting here. Yeah. Um. <laughs> what else did I say? Uh, plot wise, 
I will agree that some people didn't like it, and I understand that. So, like, as a... Well, finale-wise, Metal Gear Solid 4 is the finale. But this one is meant to just connect um, Snake's uh, series, or, like, uh, Naked Snake series to Solid Snake series. So, some people were a little disappointed in that, but I feel like most people didn't actually see, like, the subtext of all, all the things that were happening, because I, I know so much lore about, like, this series that once this game came out and I saw the plot and everything, everything just clicked to me. Maybe to some it didn't, but like, there was like a lot of like hidden details that I was like, oh my god, that's the, holy crap, that character's like, it, it made so much sense to me. Yes, there was like a certain mission that was locked off. Personally, I hate the fact that they had to take that mission out, but they must have had the reasons. But other than that, I <laughs> Konami? Reasons? What is this? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, god. This is why I'm so happy that Kojima's just said, screw you guys, I'm going to open up my own studio. And the fact that they're teaming up with PlayStation, I was like, hell yes. Lucky, lucky you, Ray. You are so damn lucky. I do hope that Kojima will perhaps give us some more PC games. I was so happy. Like, I, I, I've only played Revengeance. That is the only Metal Gear game I've ever played. But um, I am so happy to know that there are more Metal Gear games just on PC and P PC players get to play more Metal Gear games. So hopefully in the future, I'm 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 excited for you PlayStation uh, players that you that you get Kojima and he's going to be making some exclusives. But I hope he branches out to like share the love sort well, of thing. I'm pretty sure he'll share the love. I mean, this game, yeah, they'll be working with PlayStation, but I'm almost 100% positive this next game will come out on PC as well. Because one thing that I that I've heard of, about this game, just like it's only concept so far, but one of the concept uh, like creators said. Yes, this new game will have mechs in it. And I just went, oh. what? Holy crap. I mean, I know he made a, damn it, what's that other game series? Zone of Enders? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I just can't wait to see what he does now with, like, the technology nowadays. And, like, with that concept, I just want to see what the hell he does. Mm -hmm. And with the complete freedom as well, separated from the bastards at Konami. Yeah, they're... I don't know what the hell they're doing over there. I don't know what the hell... I can't fathom... Really strong drugs. Really yeah. strong drugs. I don't understand how any of their decisions they look at, like, huh, this is a good one. No, no none of it makes sense, but fine, whatever. They're, they obviously want to abandon... They want to destroy themselves. I mean, they pretty much killed themselves. No one's ever going to buy another Konami game. They kind of... Final, final nail in the coffin at the Game Awards. Yeah, that was a big just screw you to everyone. I was I, at that point. I was like, well, whatever Metal Gear, because I I saw an IGN article like, oh, we're hiring for the new Metal Gear. I'm like, I'm not buying it. I don't care. Nope. No one's buying it. No one's gonna buy from Konami ever again. Yeah. Like, it's one thing to take a developer's name off your game. Okay, maybe they're having a IP dispute or something like that. But to ban him from an award show? For a game? An award no. show? Really? My God. It's just... Ugh. Anyways. Yeah. Oh, man, we're almost reaching the half hour mark. But there's one last game I want to talk to you about, which I am so happy made into your top 10 games of the year. Another game that's going to make it to my top 10 games of the year. Spoilers. A game I want to talk to you about and just hear your opinions on because I really think this game is actually pretty underrated. I mean, it got good reviews when it came out, but it, then it kind of like slowly went into obscurity. Dying Light. Yes. I. When this game came out, like I, like I said in the, uh, my, my video, it's just, I didn't know what to think of it. But I had such a blast with it. It was just so much fun. Yes, the plot's a little finicky, but that's not why you play this game. This game is just the most free, if that's, if that's a good way of saying it, the most free way of playing a zombie game. Yeah, honestly, I know. Oh, I, I keep spoiling. I'm This whole video is me spoiling for my top 10 games of the year, but I honestly think D Dying Light is one of the best, if not the best, and personally my favorite zombie game. It just, it does the concept of zombies so well. It takes the cliches of what zombies are and what zombies are about, but does their own little twist of them that just appeals to me. Exactly. And also, one thing that I've always seen, like, in past zombie games, but then nobody got, like, in the, like, in movies, in zombie movies, there's always that threat. The zombies are coming, and they're gonna kill us. But never in, like, a zombie movie I've ever seen, like, oh, I'm gonna take all these fuckers down with, like, a machine gun, and, like, you know, they're all dead. Like, there's always fear. Like, this one actually introduces that. Like, every single zombie is a, is a threat. You see a... And, and the worst of all, 
volatiles. Oh. Those creepy motherfuckers. Personally, at first, I was like, I don't want to play at night. But like after a while, like, you know what? I like playing at night. I like the thrill of just running away. It's just exhilarating. But when it you turns get... into a horror game. That's what shocks me. It just it transforms into a true survival horror game at night. Exactly. And that's why I love it. Oh, and, and the developers. I Techland, they're amazing. The Techland is an amazing dev. Like, I've known no other dev that literally puts thank you videos in the game. Yeah. Like, if you go to extras and stuff like that, and every once in a while when you hopped into the game, there was, like, an announcement video of just the devs saying thank you for buying our game. What devs do that? I, I don't... It's... the Like, the fact that, like, that much is, like, like love and, like, care put in this game, like, just... That's why I love it. Because, honestly, if they care, then, I sh then I'm going to care. Exactly. And just... It was a great open world game, too. Another great open world game uh, amidst The Witcher 3 and Fallout 4. I love the world of Haran. Oh, yeah. And, like, the same way, like I said, Fallout, this, this world's dense, completely dense. Like, everything around you is just a desolate, destroyed city. And you pretty much go around, try to scavenge what you can, and it's... Ugh. It's not like a broken record right now, but it's just a ton of fun. It really is. It's also a unique... A unique... I don't play too many melee first-person games. There are not too many first-person games that focus on melee, and Dying Light does it surprisingly well, combining blocks with heavy attacks, with kicks. It, it, it's a very unique system. I think it's because of the parkour element, too. It's because you... It, everything feels oh, yeah. good. It's like when you attack something or, like, you know, you don't want it to die, you run away or, like, you, like... When you like, uh, what's it called? You slide under like a, like a, a low bridge or something like that. Oh yeah, yeah, sliding. Do the limbo. <laughs> yeah, so much fun. Because personally, when a game has to be like you know melee only, because there are guns in the game, but they're more of like a nuisance to use because they attract more zombies. Uh, and on getting a headshot, it's, it's honestly just like a last resort. Exactly. But um, yeah. If you're gonna have melee in a first-person like uh, you know game, make sure your character can move. Because if it's just stiff, mm -hmm. that's where it gets that's where it gets you know boring. I guess that was kind of one of the problems with uh, Skyrim. Like I love Skyrim and I do enjoy the gameplay, but the, one of the one the problem was what like you can't jo dodge, you can't move around, and you're kind of stuck in place when you're melee attacking and blocking. Like it was, it's still a good system, but Dying Light, it, it's so fluid, like you said. Yeah, and. Personally, I can't recommend it enough. Same here, same here. Anyways, we've been going on for half an hour now, right? Thank you so much for coming on the show. No problem. Any fi any any final closing thoughts on just 2015 as a whole for gaming? Um, as I stated before, 2014 as a year for gaming sucked, but it was for damn good reason because this year was by far one of the best years for video games, personally to me, and. Also, this year, we got to see what the new systems and pretty much the gaming is where it's heading. Like, I, I just love where games are going now. Yeah, exactly. Ex exactly. Exactly. I, I'm thinking the same thing here. I'm, I'm so glad that you PlayStation players, that you console players, are getting some really good games. You're getting some good exclusives. Like, the consoles are getting the love they, they deserve. I kind of feel like when they first came out, they weren't... They weren't getting the love they deserved. They didn't have enough uh, exclusives, not enough opening titles, and now you guys are finally getting some good, solid games, and I'm happy for you PlayStation and Xbox players out there. I agree 100%. Anyways, Ray, thank you so much for coming on to the show. Thank you so much. Uh, it's been an absolute blast talking on uh, talking with you. We must do this again sometime. Uh, and everyone, please remember to check out Ray's channel at uh, Shotana, if I'm pronouncing that right. <laughs> Shotana Studios, uh, your YouTube channel. Please subscribe, follow him on Twitter, all that jazz. Uh, anyways, again, thank you so much, Ray. Thank you, too. I mean, this is a blast to do. I'm, I, I really look forward to the next time we do this. Awesome, man. All right. Later, everybody.